Hello and welcome to another Andrew Mars from Fitness YouTube video. Today we are talking about the importance of protein for both fat loss and muscle building and also how to get enough protein in during the day. Also, for those who stick around to the end, there's going to be a chance, a free custom meal plan. In fact, you will get a free custom meal plan and a fat loss webinar. Today we're covering the importance of protein. So for both muscle building and fat loss, Absolutely key. If you're not eating a high protein diet, you're missing out. Trust me on this one. So firstly, for muscle building, let's not mess about here. Amino acids are the building blocks. So in order to actually build new muscle tissue, you need to be consuming a surplus of protein and calories. Now, muscle itself is actually made up of protein, water and stored carbohydrates. So in order to build that new tissue, tissue, sorry, to grow and get better, get stronger over time, you've got to be consuming an adequate amount of protein. So what is an adequate amount of protein? Firstly, I'll say recommend one gram per pound of body weight. That is, divide that by 2.2 for kilos, um, or sorry, two grams per kilo, so I times it by two. 150 pounds, 150 grams of protein, easy. I personally actually go a bit higher. I'm sitting about 165 pounds and eat 200 grams of protein a day. That's just what I like to say. I prefer a higher protein diet. As you see, there's plenty of benefits and it's not going to do you any harm. This uh, myth around uh, being harmful for your kidneys is not true for healthy individuals. Next, helps get you in a surplus. So obviously, if you're eating high-protein foods, um, things like whey protein, chicken breast, steak, etc. It's going to help get you in a surplus as opposed to maybe eating some more, you know, slow digesting foods such as vegetables and things like that. Now, obviously, they are, as I get to in a minute, more satiating, but they will help get you into that surplus. They are part of the piece of the puzzle. Essential for repair. So you've got to repair, you've got to grow and repair. How do you build muscle? You build muscle by going into the gym breaking down the tissues and rebuilding them back up. If you don't have the essential amino acids and all, everything you need to repair, you're not going to grow. Think about the protein as the materials. You've got to actually have enough materials to grow, repair and continue to build the house or you or however you want to look at the analogy. Positive nitrogen balance. This or anabolism, anabolic, being anabolic, that is in a state of growth. Now, you can influence this by consuming protein every three to four hours. So if you can check continually throughout the day, consume protein every three to four hours, that is going to be the most optimal way to build muscle. That's personally what I do, currently in a lean bulking phase, so I'll eat every three to four hours. Around 20 to 40 grams should be good. Um, even if it's just from some amino acids, a quick whey shake, that's going to be beneficial if you're looking to maximise muscle building. It's not essential, but if you're looking to get the most out of it and get any edge you can, that is a great tool to use. Next, how is it beneficial for fat loss? So if you have more muscle, aka you've built more muscle because you, you're eating all this protein, you're training with weights hopefully, then you're going to actually burn more calories. Why? Because you get more lean body mass, Therefore, your BMR is going to be higher. You're actually burn, going to burn more calories while you're sleeping, while you're walking, while you're doing anything. A 200-pound guy who's got more muscle at 10% body fat is going to burn a lot more calories than a 200-pound guy at 30% body fat simply because muscle is expensive to have. It costs your body energy to even maintain it and keep it on your frame. Next, more satiating, as I mentioned previously, Protein is more satiating than carbohydrates and fats, for example. If you're eating a lot of chicken, a lot of steak, sometimes it can get a bit filling. And that's where, in a muscle building phase, you would start to bring in some more carbohydrates and maybe even scale back the protein a touch if you're struggling with that appetite. But in a fat loss phase, we would up the protein because it is the most satiating macronutrient out of them all. So the idea that eating weaker bits and stuff for your breakfast or eating these carbohydrate-based diets for it's good for fat loss is utter bullshit. Next, higher thermic effect of food. So protein itself just being digested will cost you around 30% of the calories, just under that I think, um, just to even digest it. 100 calories of protein is going to burn around 30 calories, whereas it's 8% and 4% for fat and car carbs and fat respectively. So that's quite a difference. I don't think it's going to be life changing, but it is a difference nonetheless. Also, protein boosts metabolism, and you're also going to get a reduction in cravings 
through uh, more stable blood sugars, etc. So all that combined is going to lead to more fat loss. So why not eat a high protein diet? Next, we're going to jump into how to get a lot of high quality protein into your diet. Right, so you've got the benefits of the protein. How do you actually get it into your diet? In an ideal world, four to five servings are possible per day. Probably towards five, that's what I would recommend if you're going for absolutely optimal. But how does that actually look day to day? How can we bring that down? So, in fact, I'm going to get a pen here. So, if you are trying to say, average person trying to hit 140, 150 grams of protein, um, you want to be kind of splitting it up evenly. So, breakfast, you're looking for 30 to 40. Same for, same for lunch and same for dinner. Let's see you aim for the higher end at 40. That's about a 150 to 175 gram serving of any of these. Chicken, beef, turkey, fish, pork, any lean meat. And then breakfast, that might be a couple of eggs with some bacon medallions, smoked salmon, some whey, heck sausages, again, all great options. Split that into three meals. That's getting you around 100 to 120 grams. Next, where this is where snacks come in and getting those extra servings. So mid-morning, what are you doing? Mid-morning, try and fill that up with some sort of snack, some sort of uh, protein-based snack to go. Here's a couple of options that I find are very helpful. The protein bars and snacks. So my protein, I've got some amazing options. of protein cookie alone has got 38 grams in it. The six-layer bar is amazing. The chocolate sundae flavour is unreal. It's got 25 odd. So that's a great way to bridge the gap. Also some Greek yoghurt, some fat-free Greek, Greek yoghurt, be sure to get the Greek, that's got the much higher protein content. A reasonable serving of that's, you know, a good 15-20 grams. Mix that with a wee bit of whey. You've got a chocolate flavoured dessert, I've actually got a recipe for this, which I'll link below. Um, and it's an excellent way to add some extra protein in. Aminos, if you're... If you feel like you're not ready to eat but you want to get the benefit, as I touched on earlier, of staying anabolic, you can use some aminos to stay anabolic, get 10, 10 to 20 grams. That might just be enough to get you over that leucine threshold. Next, jerky, some beef jerky, things like that. You're excellent, the more American style things, but they are an option. Um, and if you want a full food list of a multitude of protein sources, comment below and I'll send it over to your email address. I have one that I send out to my clients for when they sign on. So... When you're breaking down things and trying to get all your protein in for the day, think about it in meals. Now, for me personally, hitting four to five meals is reasonably easy, um, to be perfectly honest. So I'm aiming for around 30 to 40 every meal and getting that 200 grams that I talked about earlier pretty easily. But what you can do is start by getting 30 in each and adding in some snacks if you're struggling to get it all in. So again, that's a 150 to 170 gram, 5 grams serving. Also, pick a couple out and then make up your breakfast menu, um, whatever that looks like to you. On the go, if you're eating out, if you don't prep your meals or whatever it is you're doing, double up on the servings. Example, going to Subway, get yourself double meat. They always skimp out and meat for a reason. It's expensive. Obviously, it's more expensive to get the doubles, but if you want to hit your goals, if you're serious about building muscle, and if you're serious about losing fat and getting in shape, achieving your dream physique, then these are the things you need to do sometimes, especially if you're on the go. Using supplements are very helpful. Whey proteins, um, protein bars and snacks, etc. All great options. Be very careful though when you're buying high protein oats or chocolate or crisps or anything like that. In all honesty, Nine times out of ten, it's just glorified and they're just the same. Even the peanut butters and things like that as well. So be very careful with them. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, put your favourite protein sources below. And subscribe for more future videos. <coughs> Jesus. Also, for those who stuck around to the end, I did say you got a free custom meal plan and my fat loss webinar. All you have to do is comment fat loss below and I'll get that sent over. Thanks very much. See you in the next.